This is another update about the Hypertime Shadow Mapping Breakthrough and the Indonesian Earthquake Prediction. And yesterday uh, there was an earthquake in Indonesia that was uh, reported by uh, JakartaNews.net as being 6.3 on the Richter scale. And it, this was in Indonesia's uh, North uh, Sulawesi uh, province, 101 kilometers southeast of Gorontalo. It came timed directly with the beginning of the solar wind from this particular um, coronal hole. This, isn't, this might just be a coincidence, you know, um, earthquakes in Indonesia are fairly common and um, but I want to go over, I want to go ahead and go over um, some of the the the, uh, the details, the the, the theory uh, behind this, um, the uh, coronal mass ejection that I'd spoke of in the last in them, um, and I was concerned that it was going to be that this that this storm area that I was I was associating with the active region around the coronal hole was mapped to. Um, uh, Indonesia. That's that's how I made the prediction. Um, but I was concerned that because I saw a coronal mass ejection, that that active area, that that active storm area on the Earth, might have actually been associated with this other coronal mass ejection. But I found there are t there are three other um, cyclonic storms um, that could have been associated with that particular event, and there wasn't one that formed around Indonesia. And so I think that this is this uh, is adding um, weight to the uh, validity of this as a method for predicting earthquakes. Um, this particular kind of prediction w has to involve um, the association of an active region uh, with a coronal hole. And so this can only this kind of prediction can only be made when there just happens to be an active region near uh, the coronal hole or proximal enough to it that um, that, a, that a, a sort of mapping or correlation can be made. Um, there's another coronal hole that's forming right now. Um, there's no active region near it and so there may not be, there, there's really no way um, to uh, make that kind of prediction of where the earthquake will be um, without this, without this mapping, and so I wanted to, I wanted to clarify that. Another thing I wanted to mention is that we had a, a, a burst of X-ray flares, um, very, very, very low energy uh, the, the, from Sunspot 1009. Um, it's been 30 days since the last Sunspot, since Sunspot um, uh, 1008, um, and so the, the, the solar cycle has been very, very weak. But 1009 did um, give us some uh, very, very minor flares. And if you're following along with the, with the earthquake uh, correlation, uh, you realize that sometimes these events are associated with earthquakes. And so you, you might have noticed that these were not. And the reason they were not is because the, the, the activity didn't, wasn't just uh, nothing for a very long time and then suddenly spikes. We'd had some x-ray activity. There had been some warmer um, warmer core weather um, at, at before the, the before these events. And so it's always uh, the trend of, of absolute cooling and then suddenly a spike. It's like I compare it to the I compare it to the, uh, the what I call the warm finger effect when you touch an ice cube that's still in the process of freezing. You know, if you if you touch it right when it's free, when it's still in the process of freezing, um, it'll it'll explode. But if you if you carefully take it out and and let it warm a little bit and then touch it, you know, there's nothing. There's no effect. And so it's only when it's only when it's in the process of of, of cooling that when there's a sudden uh, shift of higher of the higher energy um, that there is this there's this uh, effect like what we saw in Sichuan. These are the x-rays that were um, associated with almost perfectly timed with the quakes in Sichuan. 
And this only happens when the x-ray activity has been very, very low for an extended period of time. And so the, it ha there has to be a, a cooling period or a, a really, really serious differential. It can also happen when it's, when it's not been completely dead, but um, there's, a, there's a really, really significant flare. In other words, when there's a, it's, the, it's the differential, it's the sudden change in the, in the x-ray activity that induces this type of event. And so there's, there's basically two types of events that astrotometry um, uh, gives insight into prediction right now. One is this uh, event where the, uh, the x-ray activity suddenly changes from a flare, and the other is the effect from a coronal hole that um, is the foreshadow of the hypertime um, uh, uh, orbital inconsistency because of the shift in the, the actual matter, the material, on the Earth as it, as it orbits the Sun, quote unquote, um, or as it's inconsistent through its hypertime translation is the, is the higher dimensional understanding of it. And so um, this is, a, this is a, a, a good validation for the, for the process, uh, but at the same time I don't want to get too excited about it because it could have just been a coincidence. But anyway, um, so five more days, in, in another five days there might be another another jolt. I'm not sure if it's going to be in the same place. It could be. It could be still be in Indonesia. It'll be interesting to see what happens.